God anoint him every time he stands. Amen. Brings our message. Yes, I'm telling you, we need this day and time. Amen. We need we need his word. We need to study his word. But y'all been slept on it some. And I'm uh, it ain't right. I'm telling you, it ain't right. We need to study God's word and be in, in his order at all times. I don't know where the birthdays or not, but uh, we ain't got no cards. Has so, anybody had a birthday? It's How about an anniversary? Nine weeks. <laughs> Nine weeks of birthday. Yeah, I know it. Let's sing happy birthday to them anyway. Yes. Happy birthday to you. blessing to and I just thank God thank God for his touch and his hand is upon us he is a loser, the devil is a defeated foe, he just don't understand and he's not caught on yet that he's lost the battle, glory be to God but God is almighty, I believe things are in, and I've asked you and I'm going to repeat these things real quick and we're going to get right into the service, I'm not going to try not to hold very long, but Mark when we go ahead and send him the scriptures, but Brother Gary's going to try to get it put on the uh, television program again this time. And, and I think probably he thought I'd have so many scriptures, he'd need a, a long time to, to write them down. But I'm going to not try to preach very long this morning, here in just a moment. But I believe I have what God would have for us in this day and time. And the church is going forward. I believe Amen. these things are setting up. Yes. I believe things are getting ready. Amen. Brother Doug, is, is, is this. The tribulation starting, I didn't say that. I didn't say that, but I believe it is the beginning of sorrows. Mark, let's at least leave them open. Please. At least one of them. Have somebody comes by and the staff checks us out or something. I said that in jest. Anyhow. But we're just so thankful to be able to come together. And the devil's a defeated foe. He will not win over God's people. I believe this is the beginning of sorrows. We see how things are setting up, don't we? Amen. We see how quickly that one man could come. One man had the answer for all the problems and all the woes that we're going to be facing. You see, this thing's not over with yet. No. I'm not here telling you this thing's over with. It's not over with yet, but my God. Glory to God. I feel spirit this morning. My God has everything under control, and He is able, and there is nothing that my God cannot and will not do. I want to repeat a few things this morning. We went ahead and we left the offering plate sitting out back so that we won't go from pew to pew. Sister Shirley don't like that. I know, but Sister Shirley, before long, we'll, we'll be able to go from pew to pew, and you'll be able to make them fill that plate up. But since we won't go from pew to pew, we just left the offering plates back there. And, and you worship God in tithes and in offerings. And, and I want to thank you. Uh, you know, I'm not one of the ministers who mentions a lot about offerings. And, 
and money. In fact, Mary Jane has to holler over here once in a while, one of my members once in a while, remind me uh, to receive the tithes and offerings. But I want to thank you. Many people would say, well, you ought to say something about it. And I didn't just, you know, first time on Facebook, get on there and say, be sure to see your tithes and the offerings. Because <laughs> right then, that's the least thing I was worried about. I was worried about you and what was going on with us. But I knew that you would and you have, and I appreciate it so much. God has blessed our church so abundantly. Uh, well, right now we probably don't feel safe in handing out the quarterly reports, but we will give you the quarterly report. But God blessed us, and Malicia, if I'm wrong, you feel something hit me. But from January to March, our bottom line, our bottom line, the balance went up ten thousand dollars. Can you say praise hey, God? Hey, hey, hey. Tell me God don't multiply. Yeah. And then our elders and, and others were so willing to say, let's give $6,000 to the Gideons to keep them going. And speaking to a Gideon last week, and in fact, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and read that card to you. Uh, speaking to the Gideons uh, one last week, they've not had very many internationally. Now the, have I not got my thing on? Okay, I'm sorry. Got my phone on that. But anyhow, uh, internationally, you know, as far as the offices of the Gideons, they will keep going because the Gideons' money keeps them going, but they've not had very many offerings coming in to send Bibles, and they appreciated it so much, and I appreciate you so much. But anyhow, let me, before I go on, what we're going to do is, if you want to hug, that's fine, you hug. I'm, I'm in the midst of it all week long at the store, I mean. I'm right there and just been trusting God and I, I, I don't have anything. If you wear a mask, that's fine. I, I, I respect that. If you want to bump elbows, I respect that. If you don't even want to do that, I respect that. Some of our people called and let us know that we're going to be coming this morning. I respect that. I want them to be led of the Lord. I look and I see some that are not here that in my mind I was thinking they shouldn't be here. So, and they've done the wise thing, and I appreciate that. But what we're going to do today from Brandon this way, when we get done today, from Brandon's pew and Louise's pew this way, I want you, when we get totally done, okay, because I know how we do. We love, we love one another. But when we get totally done, from there to here, I want you to use this door, okay? Is that all right? Go out that door. Now, where I'm going to go is I'm going to go out that door, and I'm going to go back there to my car, okay? And you might want to come by and hug my neck, shake my hand. I'll, I'll want you to, and I'll be right there. But if I go back there, every, everything will congregate. And I, and I want to respect everybody. And then from those pews back, now y'all don't have to stay here. <laughs> y'all can go out that back door, okay? Is that all right? That's all right. All right, the Gideon, uh, Brother Charles wrote this. He's got beautiful handwriting, and I'm not used to reading beautiful handwriting. But it says, Dear Pastor and Congregations, Bibles provided by you in the tens of thousands and testaments exceed. He's talking about over the years. So, but the real thank you comes from those who are saved by reading the copy of God's Word that you provided. Never before in U.S. history have we faced anything like Corona-19. For the almost 100,000... I don't know what he, what he said now. I'm sorry. I think it's people that's done past. It's too late. But it's not too late for the other 50,000 estimated to die by August 1st. Surely there are lost souls out there that will realize they need that America needs to wake up and realize their destitute cir circumstance. I pray so. Since our membership dues pay operating expenses, the organization will be okay. But funds for scripture are almost non-existent, except for the few churches that realize the need to send the word. With Bibles costing us $5, you provided 1,320 Bibles. Can you say praise God? Amen. He added, someone added, 
$600 to the offering, so it would be $6,600 from our church. The worldwide average cost of a testament is $1.20. Listen to this, so you provided 5,500 testaments. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Church, and I like this, and this is the reason I love the Gideon organization. Church, pray for the readers of every single Bible and testament you provided. We're going to do that when we pray here in just a moment. All right. We just love the Lord. We want to go Lord, in prayer this morning. We're not going to gather around the altar right now. Now, this altar is always open. There ain't no government ever going to shut this off. Amen. And nothing else is ever going to shut this off. Thank you, Mark. I need to get these read too. I'll read that in my <laughs> This is from Brother George back there. Good to see you, Brother George. God bless your heart. I'm so glad you're able to get up and get motivated. God bless you. He's out of time. Your kindness is a blessing, so are you. I want to thank everyone for their cards and a special thanks for the generous love offering. God bless you all. Love and prayers, George. Let's give Brother George a big hand. I see a spot, and I thought about that today, too. The spot that's going to be missing. <clears throat> we need to lift Henry up, too. He sends us a thank you for, for all that your prayers and all that you've done for, sister, for, for his family since Sister Dorothy passed. Says, During a time like this, we learn how much our family and friends really mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered, Henry. And let's keep Brother Henry lifted up in prayer. You'll never know how much I'm going to miss Sister Dorothy. I wouldn't bring her back for anything. She's around the throne of God. I can see that little old hand right now. Woo! <laughs> lifted up, giving glory and praise to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Speaking in that heavenly language. Praising it, magnifying his name. But oh, I know the Lord knows what he's doing, but I miss her, I can tell you so much. We're going to see her again one day. Before very long. Before yeah. very long. I believe with all my heart. Before very long. Well, let's keep this family as it does. All right, as we go, Lord, in prayer this morning, let's remember Henry and his family and all those uh, that's involved with the family. Sister Dorothy, I know many in the church talk about how that every day you talk. Sister Louise, I know there's a void in your heart, but the Holy Ghost is filling you. Glory to God. Brother uh, we go to prayer. I, I just, uh, I think we really need to pray for this nation right now, Man. especially, especially the city of Chicago. Yes. I read this morning that the mayor of Chicago is openly defying President Trump's executive order to allow churches to open, and so she went so far as to tell people that she would do anything necessary mm -hmm. to keep it from happening. Right, and so is California's kind of fighting that situation. Yeah. There's, there's this uh, order that they can do. Uh, where they can go, if somebody's doing something that they're telling them not to do, that they can go to any extreme, like if they can go to the church and run people out and actually destroy the building if they want to. And that's something that uh, I really think that, that uh, Boston needs to do something about that. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to lift our nation up as we've never lifted our nation up before. All right. Let's remember, Shirley Caldwell, they sent a request, Pat, her sister did. She's not breathing good this morning. Remember, Dennis and Patricia Billings? They both Patricia had the virus a you know, week ago. They, they weren't even sure they were going to make it. Right. And and we got the call Friday. They might both get to come home tomorrow. Praise and God. And it's just God. Because Thank God. Yes. Yeah. Thank God good. Let's keep River lifted up. Patricia's little grandson, he's yeah. been doing better and then doing worse. He's really having a battle. How old is he? Seven. Seven years old. Seven. So he's really having a battle, and she hadn't gotten to hear from him today because there's another little child. She wants to remember him that's five years old that's been put in with COVID-19, they say. So let's, let's lift him up. Let's lift all of our people up. Sick, suffering. My God is able. Amen. There's nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he cannot do. Let's keep Sister Karen lifted up. God continue to touch her and bless her. Boy, don't Brother Bobby look good? Yeah. I'm telling you, Bobby. Let's keep Brother Ronnie lifted up. And just 
Sister uh, Debbie, us King David, and, and Joy lifted up. They wanted to be here this morning, but they just didn't. What feel. about Brother Donnie? Did he ever get his leg? Done? Is he back there? He's oh, getting oh, ready to, oh, though, praise God. We're going to let him up too. I need Yes, yes, yes. In fact, I want you and, and Mark, we're not going to break protocol, especially when the Facebook's on. But I want Brother Donnie and Brother Mark both to come stand here this morning. Come on. Brother Mark's got a shoulder that's about to be operated on. Remember Chris from the Yes, yes. I want to remember Eddie. Yes. And bad pain. He's got two real bad, well, those kidney stones. And he's supposed to go in Wednesday and have them because he's got to have surgery. But he's in terrible. And pray for his soul. Amen. You will remember that. Remember my mom, she's been real sick and they don't know what it is. It's not this virus. She's had it all since winter and she's been real yes. sick. Yes. Ain't it good to see our young people here this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank God, says Carolyn. I think we might just do that in just a little while. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we might do it in front of the clothes. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Father, I thank you for your love and your goodness. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, I praise you and I worship you. I just magnify your most wonderful name. God, I thank you for the touch of your spirit. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you, God, Lord, for, for your love and your mercy. Lord, I pray, God, that you move right here in our midst this morning. You know, every need, every burden, every care, every person that's been lifted up, God, we lift them up before you, asking God that healing, asking God that deliverance would reach down. Right now, Lord, I pray, oh, hallelujah, Lord, that you touch Brother Donnie's legs. God, he's depending upon you. Lord, he's trusting in you. And God, I know that you're able. I ask God from the top of his head and the soles of his feet, God, that you'll bring soundness. Lord, that you'll go before and make ways. Lord, Brother Mark Schroeder, we don't know, God, exactly what's going on, but I know that I serve a God that does as it is able. And we agree together right now, oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you're going to bring healing. God, that you're going to lift him up. God, that you're going to go before and make ways. And I give you the praise. I give you the honor. All the special needs, all the special concerns. We lift them up before you by believing you, God. Reach down in that hospital room. Touch and bring healing and bring strength. Lord, to all the ones that's been mentioned, we thank you for it. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. And amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Everybody remain standing. Find your church hymnal. Sister Ivan Jean, I don't know what you got picked out, but we got to sing I'm Going That Way next. Okay, uh, page 8. Page 8. And that right, Brother Ronnie, and know what it is? Oh, I mean, sing out. And let me tell you, here's the way we're going to do this thing. So they can't say we organized. <laughs> If you feel the Spirit of God, you want to take on a, a Jericho, Jerusalem victory wrap around the church. You want to go around the outside door and back in, that's fine. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, bless His name. Oh, I feel His presence.
sing this one first, and then we'll sing that. <laughs> I'm going that way. Because if I'm going through with Jesus, is that what it was? Because if I'm going that way or I'm going through with Jesus. Oh, I know. I'm talking to Ronnie right now. I'm going that way. You're just so excited to be here this morning, ain't you, girl? Whoa! I love it. Page 88. Page 88. That's it right there, ain't brother Ronnie? That's it. That's the one. Well, hey, how can you play that tambourine back there? Can we sing that third verse one more time before we sing 162? <clears throat> I 
pressing on on Robert saying she was going to help. Me and Mary Jane sang that in just a moment. <coughs> Linda, you and Kyle and Christine want to come up and try to sing? Ain't heard you in a long time. Well, a year or two. Tell it, Brother Gary. Come on right quick. Come on, Facebook's running. I'm going to let the time limit on it or not. Come on. <laughs> My, ain't God good? Amen. Has God been good to you? Amen. He has been so good to me. While they're coming, I won't not waste this time, but I'm going to say how much I appreciate everyone and that you've been taking care of the church. You know, I live far away, so I know many of you came by, checked it out. But Danny, I appreciate what you do for the yard and all that. And Lord Jay and Lindy, how y'all come by. And everybody, everybody, don't leave anybody out. Decorations put on the church. I appreciate all that you do. And God has blessed us so much. Thank you. Yeah, can't get you there. Facebook can get you with the camera. Man. Come on. Stand right there in that doorway. Good, day, good breeze. Come on, can't get you with that air coming. That's what they say. The door, all right? So you need them over here. Well, shut, shut the door. Reach back in. Okay, I just don't want to see you listen to that wall. Is that good? All right. Where's your going on?
Aren't you thankful for that touch? Aren't you thankful for that touch this morning? Glory to God. All right. We're going to try to press it on. I think that's the only thing. I didn't go by my opinion. 
because I have plenty of opinions, but I didn't go by that opinion. I sought the Lord and I prayed and asked Him what He would have me to do. <clears throat> Talk to other fellow ministers who are doing different this morning, and, and, and I agree with what they're doing too. But I really felt like this is what God would have us to do this morning. And it feels so good, don't you? It feels so, so good to be together with God's head. How does people make it in life without a church? How does people make it in life, especially without God? Knowing that they have one they can call upon who will never leave them or never forsake them. And then you come together with corporate worship. I look back through there and I've seen hands lifted up. Seen faces that I hadn't seen rejoicing in the Lord in a long time. And it overjoyed my heart more than you'll ever know. I could can, I can leave right now and say it's been good Amen. to be in the house of the Lord. But don't worry, I'm not going to preach very long, Lord willing. You won't have to worry about the crowd at the restaurants today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to preach for just a moment on the message I believe the Lord would have for us. We, Yes, thank you, Brother Mark. I was going to ask for another cut, but I was afraid since sure doesn't got situated back there. I hope yours is as good as Shirley's is. I know I done done it away, says Shirley. It's gone. I'm telling you. You look too comfortable sitting back there, says Shirley. You was comfortable. All right, James chapter 4 and verse 8. Words you've heard me say many, many times. Listen to these words. This is where it comes. James 4 and verse 8. Draw nigh to God. That's a message, isn't it? But here's the greater message. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaven. Let's humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Father, I ask that you touch this message this morning. Give me the words to say that will touch our hearts, that will touch our lives. Let your word go forth. Let everyone here be touched. Those later through the different ministries of the church, maybe those who's listening now by Facebook Live, I pray God that you'll touch their heart. And Lord, that you'll lift them up. And Lord, that your word will go forth. That it'll accomplish it. It'll bring to pass the things that you send it forth to do in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will, flip right with me to the book of Hebrews. We just got done going through the book of Hebrews, but Hebrews and James has very similar passages in them. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 19. <clears throat> Speaking about and what I want to preach this morning, we draw near to God. Now, I've heard a lot of people, a lot of opinions going on, and, and I, again, I'm not going to get into those, and I told you to hang them at the door, and I believe you did. But I've heard a lot of people saying, well, the church is not the church house. No, it's not. The church is not these four walls. Let me tell you that right now. But doesn't it feel good to come together in corporate worship? Amen. Doesn't it feel good to come together and lift our brothers and our sisters up? Doesn't it feel good to assemble together in His Spirit and in His presence and feel glory to God and feel the anointing and the Spirit and the love of our brothers and our sisters to come together and draw near to God? We don't have to come inside these four walls to draw near to God. I hate to think that. I'm glad on my job. When, when everything else could be going wrong, when corporate's calling and, and everybody else is ill and everything's ill and everything's going on and, and, and contractors are not happy and employees are not happy and I'm not happy and nobody's happy, I'm glad right there, oh glory be to God, I'm glad I can draw near to God, Brother Gary, when it seems like my world's collapsing and it seems like the foundations are destroyed and it seems like situations and circumstances circumstances have come against me and I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. I'm glad that I know my God is near. I'm glad he's got a place that I can scrooch right up. You know what scrooch right up means, don't you? I'm glad he's got a place right there by his side and he says, come right here. You ever see a child out? I, 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 like, I love children and I love to kid with them and pick on them, but you ever see those that are real bashful? 
They're real bashful. What's the first thing they do? Whichever parent's close by, they grab a hold of that leg, don't they? And they hide behind that leg and they peep out. I'm glad, Brother Anton, when all this is happening, oh, hallelujah, I can be scrunched right up to my father. I can peep out every once in a while and know that my God's got it, that I don't have to be afraid, that I'm holding, oh, hallelujah, not to his leg, but I'm holding to his unchanging hand, and he will never leave me, and he will never forsake me. I'm glad he doesn't push me aside. I'm glad he doesn't say, come on out from there. I'm glad, oh, hallelujah, he has a place for me by his side that I can draw near. Now, in Hebrew chapter 7, verse 19, you thought I wasn't going to read that, didn't you? For the law made nothing perfect. Listen. But the bringing in of a better hope did. Glory to God. By the which we draw nigh unto God. Now this might surprise you, but the law makes nothing perfect. The law opens our eyes and shows us that we're wrong. It shows me when I'm, I might not want to say this, but it shows me when I'm doing 45 and a 35 that I'm wrong. But it doesn't make me slow down. Now, I tell you what will make me slow down when I see that car sitting there. <laughs> Every time, on. But the law makes nothing perfect. But the better hope, what was that better hope? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You see, the law was a mirror. The law, I could look in and I could see how bad in sin I was. I could see how lost from God I was. I could see how damaged and unfinished I was and incomplete that I was. But oh, in Jesus Christ, He completes me. In Jesus Christ, oh, hallelujah, I stand complete and I stand finished and I stand righteous even though I falter and I fail and I stumble. Because of faith in Christ and His cross, because I am trusting in Christ and believing Him for the forgiveness of sin, Brother Larry, I stand justified just as if I had never sinned. You see, the law had no power to change a man's heart. Seeing that stop sign don't change my heart. The law had no power. This law had no power. Reading the Ten Commandments has no power to change me. But Christ's glory, I feel his presence. But Jesus Christ in me, by faith, Change this old stony heart and turn it into a heart of flesh. Wrote upon my heart his laws and his ways. I don't need a stop sign to tell me to stop. I hear glory to God. I hear the Holy Ghost, Brother Brandon, say, Stop! Stand! Be still! Aren't you thankful that God told us that before all these things began to happen? You remember the messages that were given? You remember the teaching that was given? The message and interpretations, the preaching, the teaching, all that line to telling us to stop, be still. Something's coming on us, but to stop and trust in God, not to fear. I remember the day Sister Dorothy God had, had talked to her and spoke to her heart that week, and she was just exploding, had to say something. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, call on her to dismiss in prayer. I called on her to dismiss in prayer, and all oh, it began to come out. And she began to tell how God told us to not fear, to not be afraid. I want to tell you, child of God, I'm not telling you not to be cautious. I'm not telling you not to use common sense. We all know to wash our hands. We all know to stay home when we're sick. We all know these things. I'm not telling you not to use that. But what I'm telling you is not to allow fear to cripple you. Not to allow fear to hold you down. Not to allow anxieties and anxiousness about what's coming upon the face of the earth to stop you. To hold to God's unchanging hand and know that He will make a way for you. That law could not change my heart but Christ in me the hope of glory changed my heart and made me a new creature you see that better hope <clears throat> I like the way the Holy Ghost put it there don't you a better hope a better way I always like a better way I'm that kind of boss man you come and you show me a better way and we'll do it that way I appreciate my guys well they kept me from making some crazy 
moves. They'll come and say, but, you know, Doug, this and this, and, and that's going to mess up. And I said, well, thank you, boy. I was about ready to mess up. I love a better way, don't you? I love a better way, and I'm thankful that God had a better way for his people. What the law could not do, Christ Jesus done in us now. We can enter in. You realize that? The priest, and I ain't got time to get into this this morning, but the priest, one time a year, the high priest. You, you read about the tabernacle, and you read about the temple, and you read about the holies of holies, and only one time a year could the high priest enter in, and there the Ark of the Covenant, in all of its splendor, in all of its beauty, was there one time a year. He had to go through all kinds of cleansings, had to do all kinds of things. They would tie a cord. Uh, history tells us they would tie a cord around his ankle in case something was done wrong because there the judgment of God would strike him dead. Nobody's going in to get him so they could pull him out. Oh, but I'm thankful. I want you to hear this. I'm thankful. Driving down the road. I don't know about you, but I'm about to shout. Yeah, Driving down the road. I can enter right into the very presence. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Think about that. In my home, on my back porch, went out last night, looked up at the stars of the heaven, was thinking God was going to be able to be together and just praying for situations and circumstances right out on my back porch. I can come right into the holies of holies. What kind of cleansing did you get? Only the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Brother Donnie, what can make glory? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank God I can enter in right into the holies of holies and there have communion with God the Father. And all of His holiness and all doesn't change His holiness, doesn't change His righteousness, but when He sees me, He sees the blood of Brother Josh and His dear Son, Jesus Christ. And He looks and He says, there's my child, that there's my son, or there's my daughter. Come on in. What do you have need of? Because Jesus Christ now has become the veil. It is by faith. It is not of works. It is by faith. It is not of works. But when you believe, hear this. A lot of people want to use that for a crutch. And they, they want to go on living their life like they want to. But when you truly believe in Christ and the cross. Hear me. When you have put your faith. Brother Bobby, when you have put your faith in Christ and his cross. And he has come in and changed your life. He puts a new attitude. You no longer want to drink from the hole you used to drink from. Is that plain enough? You no longer, let me just get a little plainer, you no longer want to go to the joints that you used to go. Because you're drinking from a new fountain. You don't have to sip the wine anymore of this world. Is that plain enough? I don't mean get no plainer, do it. You don't need that because you're Glory, that new wine, oh hallelujah, is flowing up inside of you like a fountain, like a river of living water springing up in your heart and springing up in your life because you have believed in Christ and His cross and He changes your life. That means I don't fail, sure it don't. I live in this world just like you. I face mean, angry, hateful people that's woke up that morning and they are bound and determined for somebody to knock the chip off of their shoulder. And I'm ashamed to say sometimes I'm the very one they're looking for. <laughs> I live in the same world you do. I live in the same... But you see, he has made a difference in my heart. We have been overrun. I thank God for business. Don't, don't get me wrong. But we have been overrun. I'm telling you, I believe everybody in Wilkes County has been by our place. And I've been praying, God help me. I, you can ask Mom. I'm more like Grandpa than anybody, any of her kids. And I have a short patience sometimes. And I've been praying, God help me. You see, he's changed. When he used to, I'd just stay grumpy. Used to, used to, I wouldn't worry about how I might sound or how I might affect somebody. 
But I'm growing in grace. I'm growing in God. Now you're done there. You're done righteous. You're done holy. You don't have to admit any of these things, but I do. And every morning I've been saying, God, help me. Watch my, guard my tongue. Guard me, Lord. That's what Christ will do. Doesn't mean you're going to not fail. Doesn't mean you're not going to stumble. Doesn't mean you're not going to falter. But it means He's put a heart in there that He speaks to you. And when you do stumble and falter, we have an advocate, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not looking to do wrong. I want my heart to be purified. I want to be in right standing with God. And when we do that, God will draw nigh unto us. You see, we are purified. How are we purified? Be turning over with me to the book of Romans, and I'm about to hurry. Romans chapter 6. We are purified when we make Christ the object of our faith. What is the object of your faith? It's not this church building. The last nine weeks has proved that. The next last nine weeks has proved that. The following coming time that God gives us will prove that. Our faith's not in this church building. Your faith's not in Pastor Doug. Your faith's not in some person. Your faith is not in some denomination. Your faith is in Christ and Christ alone. And when we make Him the object of our faith, then we are purified in Christ Jesus. We, we allow the Holy Spirit the right to come into our hearts and the right to come into our lives and sanctify us and help us to walk in right paths. Romans chapter 6. I've got to read these right quick. Listen. What shall we say then? Listen. This, this verse kills a lot of theories. It's out here. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Amen. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? <clears throat> Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Keep your place right there. We're going to go down to verse 12. Baptism, is he talking about water baptism? Not here. I believe in water baptism. Before very long, we have a precious young girl that has said she wants to be baptized. My precious wife wants to do uh, the first works over again. She wants to be baptized. And this is soon, uh, maybe a few weeks down the road right here. Brother Robert and Brother Gary, I'll call you and I'll say, get the baptizing spot ready. And we're going to baptize because I believe in baptism. What does baptism represent? It represents that we stand here, we believe in Jesus Christ, we are dead to the world. We are baptized. We are in Christ Jesus. And we are risen in Christ Jesus. We take Christ on. Baptism that he's talking about here is the spiritual baptism. That we no longer seek the things of this world. We are buried unto death to this world. But we are risen alive in Jesus Christ. We walk in newness of life. We have been planted together with Him. And we have been raised up in the likeness of His resurrection. I don't know what you're looking for. Now you might be looking, and, and hear me all the way out before you throw stones. You might be looking for the end of Corona. I'm not. God, God signed. I'm not saying it's going to go on. But that's not what I'm looking for. You might be looking for our nation to be roaring again and wonderful. I'm not saying I don't want these things. Hear me all the way out. But that's not what I'm looking for. You might be looking for a point in your life. I'll be honest with you, I ain't looking forward to retirement. But that's not what I'm looking for. You know what I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. Sometime today you ought to go on your back porch. I can remember when I was just a child. And I'd go out and I'd look up in the heavens and I'd see the clouds begin to part. And you know what this young heart would begin to desire? To see Jesus Christ Himself. Glory to God. But that's what I'm looking for. 
I'm looking to see Jesus Christ step out on the clouds of glory with the voice of the shout of the archangel and the trump of God to sound. You see, I have been raised in the likeness of his resurrection. I don't believe that it's very long. Brother Doug, you're trying to set times. No no way would I set a time. I don't know his times. I, I don't understand his time. But I can see the things that are going on and I can see the things that are happening. And I can see the things that are setting up. And I want to tell you, I'm looking at any moment. I'm looking. I'm watching. I'm waiting for him to step out on the the clouds of glory with the voice and the shout of the archangel. The trump of God is going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what I'm looking for. Glory to come. The resurrection. Let me hush. Brother Mark, I've done pretty good about standing in your hand. Facebook's had that hand. <laughs> Sitting in front of that computer. I don't have to move around. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 12. Let not sin. I want you to hear this. Romans 6 and 12. This, this is very important. We as God's children need to hear this. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. That stops a lot of theories, Brother Larry. Stops it cold. How, 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 how do I not? Well, listen. He goes on. God will tell you to do something that he doesn't give you the equipment. That's right and the ability, and the means, and the wisdom to do it. Verse 13, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. You remember, I, I don't know if you remember the Sunday before the Sunday that all this stuff happened. And I preached about, mentioned about fear and anxiety. And I mentioned about, I don't have any members that y'all couldn't believe that we said that, they said that we had run out of toilet paper <laughs> and peanut butter. Well, it happens, don't it? Fears, anxieties, these things come. You see, we yield our bodies. We yield ourselves. There was a comedian, what the point that I was getting ready to say, I don't know how many here remember this. There was a comedian. I'm not trying to push him or glamorize him. His name is Cliff Wilson. Don't know a whole lot about him. But I remember what he used to say. <laughs> Geraldine, the one who was acting like he was, would say, The devil made me do it. <coughs> the devil don't make you do anything. I love the little rascals. I believe I mentioned this last Sunday when I was preaching about not yielding to the devil. And I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Stymie. He was getting pushed to do something wrong when he said, Get behind me, devil. Don't push. <laughs> Child of God, you have that ability. The devil cannot make you do anything. Don't say the devil made me do it. The devil did not make... But you yield yourselves as instruments of unrighteousness. But now listen, what, what, what the, but yield yourselves, the rest of this verse, but yield yourselves unto God. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of the righteousness unto God. You believe in Christ, you believe in His cross, then the Holy Ghost of God has every right to come into your heart and lead you and guide you and direct you if you will yield. But we're hard-headed, aren't we? I said we. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. I'm telling you about how to draw near to God. For we are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But now listen, herein is the victory. Listen. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin. Those chains are cut. I'll never be put back in the slave market again. Never on the auction block again. I'm a child of almighty God. What sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. That Holy Ghost will lead you in right paths. 
He will lead you so that you can be nigh unto God. We need to humble, James tells us. We need to humble ourselves. And when we humble ourselves, God will lift us up. Church, we live in desperate times. We live in desperate times. I preached about and talked about these things coming. Mentioned them. But you know I'm human and I kind of hoped it would be somebody else's lifetime. But we're in desperate times. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you that we're not in desperate times. We're in desperate times. Perilous. That's what the Word of God taught me. But my God is alive. He's the same God that He was before Corona ever came. He, he, he's the same God that he was before the economy ever began to shut down. He's the same God before the fears and the anxieties that we are facing now ever came. He is the same God. And he is able. I'm going to talk to you this minute. I'm going to close. Oh, I feel his presence. Father, I love you this morning. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Church, for a moment, can you just lift your hands and love him? Hadn't it been so long since we together as a congregation has just lifted our hands and glorified and magnified and exalted his name together? Lord, you are so wonderful. Lord, you are so great. God, you are so mighty. I'm so thankful that you have a place for me. Let me never leave that place by your side. Let me never quit holding to your hand. But oh, God, lead me and guide me through these days that we live in. In Jesus' name. Church, we live in perilous times, but God already knew. Things take me by surprise. Things take me by surprise. And I'll be honest with you, this took me by surprise. This took me by surprise. Love you, Sister Ross. You look beautiful. God bless her heart. I love her so much. She's so precious to our church. So precious. We love all our people. Those not here this morning, we love them more and more. And we're praying that God give them strength and lift them up. God is so good. Don't you love him this morning? Amen. We're facing situations. We're facing circumstances. They're here on us. Perilous times. But we have one who will go with us. He knew what was happening. He knew what 2020 was going to be. You remember praying about 2020? You remember praying, God, just, just be with us? He's been with us. Nine weeks. I counted it up yesterday. I'm just talking to you with my heart now. We're going to close. Nine weeks that we've not been able to be together. But he's never left. Yeah, he never will. The first Sunday coming up, I thought, I don't know about Facebook Live. I don't know about how to do all that. But God do something. I'll do it next Sunday. The Spirit of God began to deal with my heart. We sung that Saturday. You can go on Mary Jane's page and you can count and see how many weeks and what all's been happening. We sung that Sunday. And I, I know a lot of preachers used to, you would hear them preach bad about Facebook and I've made comments, but I've also always said it could be good, used for something good. Amen. But I read a little funny and said, last Sunday the preacher said something bad about Facebook or down about Facebook and now this Sunday he's saying, join us on Facebook Live. <laughs> but that Saturday, me and Mary Jane, we tried. We got the computer in there. It didn't work too good if you listen to it. I don't know what about that computer, but it just would not get the sound right. And somebody suggested a phone. We tried the phone. It's done good so far. But we started then, and God directed and led and blessed. He blessed through this. I seen, I, I, was, I was preaching one Wednesday night, I'm pretty sure it was. And I'm not, I wouldn't call a name for anything or even a hint so that you know what I'm talking who I'm talking about. But a person that has been in our church that I believe knew the Lord 
and it's so, so far away from the Lord. And I was sitting there preaching and I saw that little face come up. Amen. If she got to hear the gospel again one more time, it's been worth all these nine weeks. Amen. Another Wednesday night, I was preaching, teaching, whatever I was doing. And I seen a little face come up. It was a lady that I never thought would be on the computer. <laughs> I liked to shout. I started calling her name on the computer, and I thought, I better not. <laughs> And there she was. I about lost it several times on there. I'm sure you know that. When I see your face come or your comments come, because I just love you so much. Remember, Jane? We love you more than you live enough. And I thank God for the love and the victory and the life that He has given us as part of church of God. As part of church of God, we've got great things coming. I've drawn to a close. Our young people, someone's already donated over a hundred toys yes. for y'all shoe boxes and we can start putting them together again. And it's already been carried down to the fellowship hall. So that's took care of through the shoe boxes. We've took we've done the Gideon offer, and I want us to go ahead, Brother Doug. We're in perilous times. I know that, but we're still not going to become a pond. Yes. We're going to be a roaring river. Amen. For the glory and the praise of God. I believe with all my heart. I don't want you to be laid back now. You have to put a soft drink aside a week or whatever you might have to put aside. You know, they come at us with all these fears. And I reckon one of the greatest fears that a preacher can have is being out of fried chicken. I told somebody this week, I can eat pork and beans and I ain't got no pork to go in and I can eat beans. <laughs> I can live on peanut butter. Amen. Whatever we got to do, God's hand will be there. I have been young and now I'm old and yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging for bread. Amen. You go ahead and you start laying back for some marriage purse. God's going to help us. I know, I know we've set a big goal our young people set a goal of emailing 400 shoe boxes before this thing hit. And I'm glad you've done it before this thing hits yep. because it might have hurt our faith. Yep. And they're going to do 100 regular shoe boxes. And our church is going to do 100. That's 600 shoe boxes. But by God's grace and mercy, we can do it. Yes. I want us to stand. I'm going to hush. I, it's just been so long since I've been with you. Brother Doug, remember Chris Let's remember all of our people. Yes, all of our people not here this morning, too. Yes, Brother Gary. Thank you, Brother Gary. Rosalie, Janie, all of our people not here. Debbie, Ronnie, Sister Lois, Brother David, Sister Joy, all of our people. And I know Sister Faye, Granny Faye, Lord, I miss her. All of our people. And until they feel God directing them to come back, I don't want them to. I want them to do what God's leading me. Amen. And we're going to lift them up. Well, Doug, them. Um, I got about 40 directories done. If you want one right in the back, I mean, I, I'm a procrastinator. I didn't think I used to be. But, you know, I think maybe God gave me this time to get it all worked on. But I got it together. So good. You need one. I'll, I'll have some more next week if we run out. I just, I just want to say something. We so, appreciate you doing it, too. Last week, I had five family members, close family members, in four different hospitals in two different states, right. and they were all going through something. And I couldn't go be with any of them. I couldn't do anything, but I could pray. Amen. And, I mean, even though the, it, just, it just felt like it was, Thank didn't you. even hardly know how to pray because there was so many that were sick and facing Amen. something. That's when the Holy Ghost. But I prayed. Lord. And I prayed through it. And yes. you know, God has touched every one of them. Yes, glory He's to still God. Touching. Thank He's you, still Jesus. Still touching God. Yes. And I just thank the good Lord for that. Amen. And I know, you know, the prayer line. I know, even though we couldn't be to church, we still had that prayer line. Still we the still church. had that. Amen. And I, I just want to thank you and Mary Jane for being so faithful on yes. Facebook. Because, you know, my sister in law, she don't have Facebook. 
But I figured out how I could send those songs to her, and it has been a blessing. Because, yes. I mean, she's been down there in the hospital. She lost her mother while she was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. She didn't even get to go to the funeral. Mm -hmm. She's still in the hospital. Yes. But she had that to hang on to, and she right. just wanted to thank you all so yes. much because yes. she has looked forward to getting yes. those songs every yes. day. Thank you, Jesus. God and has. God you has. know, God can Go work. Yes, he can. He has. Yes, he has. God has took it and changed it around. For good. The devil meant for bad. Mm -hmm. The devil meant for evil. But God takes it and he makes it for good. Josh, you need to walk a little anyway. Go back there and hit a few of those and bring up here for those that's got to go. Look at our militias. Dun -dun. Is that some of them or not? Here's some of them. She's going to put some of them. Yeah, one of the plates there that they can. And then that's the books, right? For those that's going out this way. I tell you what, we need to give Sister Alicia a hand for all the work she does. She is a blessing. She is a blessing. All right. God has been so good to us, Andy. He has heaped, poured blessings upon us. And we give him praise. We give him honor. We give him glory. I have a cousin named Jean Bryant who has been recently diagnosed with lung cancer. And I'd like for y'all to remember him. Amen. Any others of lifted hands? All right, let's pray, and then I'm going to say a word. Go to Gary. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's lift our hands together. Brother. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. She's having trouble with her eyes. Amen. God can touch those eyes. Go ahead. My sister up in prayer. Yes. Amen. She was scheduled for back surgery. But then when this virus hit and everything, they quit doing procedures yes. like that. And she's passed through weeks. Yes. yes. Brother, Rob, Brother Robert, have you got your oil? No, no. No, I don't. There you go. Bar mine and run over there. Uh, I know she's Karen won't mind you touching her with that oil. And Uncle Bobby. Um, she's Karen for her eyes. Oh, okay. And Uncle Bobby, anoint me. I'm going to stand in for this lady that calls in on my prayer line. She's never been anointed, and her church doesn't believe in it. And I told her I would stand in for her. I just Amen. thought about it. She asked me if we anointed it's people. Uh, I want everybody to remember God. Yes. He's been having trouble with his eyes, and he's been having other problems. Come right by here, Brother Robert. Robert. <laughs> we do pray for him. That's going to touch those eyes. Yes. Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> oh, I love you. Ain't God good? Amen. All right. Let's lift those hands towards heaven. Father, you know every need, every burden, every circumstance. You know every name that's been mentioned. Lord, I pray that your grace and your mercy, that your healing and on and power will reach town, God, and will touch. Will touch these eyes, God. Will make them whole. Lord, will touch every situation, every circumstance. Lord, will touch this precious lady. Will touch the sister, Lord. All of our people. Lord, we ask right now, God, and we lift you up in Jesus' most precious name. Lead this church. Guide this church. Direct this church, I pray. In your most precious name. Amen. All right, before you dismiss now, we've got...